Amen. Let's welcome Pastor Dami to speak to us. Amen. Hallelujah. I wish I came first. <laughs> you know, I started praying and said, what is there to share again? <laughs> but, uh, yes. <laughs> can we just in a minute, can we just hallow the name of our God, our King? The one that has called us to this holy convocation. The one that unites our hearts together. Our instructor, our teacher. The revealer of truth and mysteries. Yes. Yes. We hallow your name this afternoon. Blessed be God. Thank you. Thank you for insight. Thank you for revelation. Thank you for utterance. Thank you, Lord. We are grateful. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Please leave our, let's have our seats. Good afternoon, everyone. So I want to first of all thank uh, Reverend and Reverend Mrs. for this great opportunity. Let's celebrate them very well now. Hallelujah. Amen. So my time is limited. All other protocols duly observed. Amen. The secret of his power. You see, this um, topic, I'm the one that caused the problem of this topic. So I traveled with uh, Reverend to Apuja and you know during the break we were in the same hotel just i think i just sent one another so i went to see him in his office uh, no in his room rather and i asked him so sir what is the consecrational requirement of the prophetic office reverend did not he said what do you mean i said the consecrational requirement of a teacher is meditation primarily meditation and i said and i said so what is it for the he said you will pray oh. <laughs> so later we will we'll look at that uh, you will pray oh. that's one of my topics <laughs> you will what pray oh not not you will pray <laughs> you, you don't understand what i just said you know there is you will pray there's you we pray oh emphasis on the oh <laughs> amen. amen all right i did a bit of writing so said the introduction of elijah to us to the pre pages of scripture and his rise to prominence in the political space of the nation of israel seems like a sudden occurrence if you look if you are reading scripture it's as if elijah just landed <laughs> Elijah the Tishbite. Where is this coming from? You know, it's as if he didn't have any prior dealings with God. It's as if he just rose to notoriety all of a sudden like that. But this is not consistent with the theme of scriptures. We understand in working with God, nothing just happens. Nothing just happens. God has a way of routing his people through a process, a very detailed process. To, 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 to bet something in that person that will be relevant for the assignment that God, you know, you know, Reverend was telling us that we are his workmanship. God is at work in us. Hallelujah. So it is not a, I, I wrote here that uh, contrary to the viewpoint that we understand established patterns and templates got in from the Bible that nothing suddenly appears. Nothing suddenly appears. <laughs> the God that we serve is very consistent with, the, with his way of doing things. So the story of Elijah did not start in 1 Kings 17. It is clear in the Bible that it is clear that the Bible is not a book of history. It's not a book of history. Although history is contained in scriptures. But it's not a book of history. So it's, it's not going to tell you when you were born, as you were growing... You went to this school no no it will give us enough reference to make a an informed decision about a concept about a character about an idea that's how the bible is framed so if we want to really understand the elijah code we need to study three major characters in scripture that's assignment it's a school so there's assignment praise god we need to study john 
We need to study Elisha. Then we need to study Elijah to grasp what God is communicating. Praise the name of the Lord. So let's open our scriptures to uh, look. Chapter 1. Where we're going is verse 17, but we can start from verse 14 to bring context into what we're reading. Luke chapter 1. It says, And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. It's talking about John now. Verse 15. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. One thing I want us to first of all note here is that the greatness of Elijah is before the Lord. Our greatness is not based off of the parameters of men. So you know, many at times the the challenge of pastors. There are many pastors here, so we are, it's our industry. So let's talk about it. <laughs> Praise God. Is that we compare ourselves? It's a major challenge. It, there's no problem if you don't have a car, in as much as you and your pastor friend you are trekking together. But immediately you get a car, there's a challenge. Our greatness is not measured by human parameters. Our greatness is our strength before God. And that is why Elijah, many a times he will say, Before God, whom I stand. That is his credential. That's what he brings to the table. Our greatness before him. And there is nothing that should compromise that standing before the Lord. It's nothing. I just, wanted, I just wanted to throw that out first. That you are okay. Amen. I, I want us to first of all rest in the fact that the fact that God called you. I would say many are called few are what chosen you are called from the many the fact that god called you first of all you are in a class of your own yes, sir. and i want us to first of all rest in that understanding that god called me the hand of god is upon me the oil of his spirit is upon my head god has called me to reach out to a, a demography of people i think that should first of all be settled inside us I was a day that compared themselves with one another. They are not what? They are not wise. Which one is better? Mango or orange? You don't compare. They are not the same thing. There's no basis for comparison. Hallelujah. And in the, in the order of things, when God does things, he, He's turned by Tom PLC. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't understand. You don't understand. It's his first stack and balance. It's pa Pastor Better. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's turn by turn. What? Yes. When God does your own, He will do my own. Yes. Hallelujah! <laughs> if He's blessing your neighbor, is what is in the neighborhood. It will still reach you. The way, <laughs> the way He was sharing uh, the inheritance of the nation of Israel, He didn't share everything at once seasons upon season was the unveiling of god's providence to his people so i just want us first of all to rest if there is a minister of god around you say let me tell him rest, rest. let me turn to another by say rest 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 rest, 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 rest. all right verse <laughs> verse 16 and many of the children of israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Verse 17. And it shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared. Hallelujah. This means to really understand Elijah we need to cross-reference his life with that of John 
the spectrum that covers the Elijah code entails detailed study of the life of John, the life of Elisha, and the life of Elijah. During this course of the teaching, whenever Elijah code is mentioned, I can throw it. It can be from John. It's still Elijah. It can be Elisha. It's still what? It's still Elijah. Praise God. Why Elijah? Why are we studying Elijah? No, this is not preaching. This is teaching. Yeah. Why Elijah? Number one. Elijah had a powerful ministry and successfully transitioned into the next generation. He had what? A powerful ministry and successfully transitioned into the next generation. So let's quickly open to Second Kings chapter 2 from verse 1. Sorry, the AC has made my throat dry. <laughs> Alright, let's read it. One, two, three, go. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by what? All of you that said it was the character of fire that took him to heaven. <laughs> what took Elijah to heaven? A whirlwind. Even songs, they say, Keke Elijah. No, it's not Keke. It's wild wind. <laughs> that Elisha went with Elijah from where? From Gilgal. It, it is very important to note where they, are, they were coming from. It's very important to note where they are what? Because of time, I won't go to that text of scripture. Yeah. But let's see. So. Well, let's Okay. From Gilgal. They were coming from Gilgal. Let me just make a commentary briefly about that. Gilgal is a place of circumcision. It was the place where God asked that the nation of Israel be circumcised again. Because they had wandered in the wilderness for a long time period of time and the next generation had not experienced circumcision and without circumcision you can't enter the promise the circumcision is God's covenant the token of God's covenant with his people and it's something that must be done so this time around God asked them to say and listen they were walking through the wilderness they were wild beasts they were uh, opposing uh, nations all around it was not a strategic move militarily to circumcise praise God in fact if you are to view it is a foolish move because you are vulnerable remember when um, the, the sons of um, Jacob wanted to wipe out his civilization what did they tell them to do they say, ah, we can't be my wife, can, my, my sister cannot marry you. You have to circumcise. It was a military tactic. So the, well, the time they were they, they didn't go on the first day. They went on the third day. The Bible said when they were sore, when they were defenseless, when they could not fight, they entered into there and then they wiped out a whole civilization. So now if God is telling them to circumcise, you know they are, they are they are they are they are they are open to any form of attack but to circumcise means that you are putting the confidence of your defense in god that you are my rock you are my defense you are my hiding place so the the so that that's the best place of circumcision now if you look at what happened next after circumcision was that there was an introduction of a personality into the life of Joshua. He introduced himself as the captain of the Lord's army. And he asked Joshua, remove your sandal. Yeah. It's not because his legs were dirty. Praise God. It, it, is a, it is a matter of doing things in the nation of Israel. If you are a kingsman redeemer, and you are supposed to redeem uh, redeem uh, the landed property of your kingsman and you are not able to 
the rule in the nation of Israel is that you remove your sander to show your inability and then you hand it over to the person that is able to redeem. Remember that's what happened between um, Boaz and the other guy. You, you give it to the person that has the ability to redeem. So the person takes up the right of redemption. So when the angel was telling him to remove his sander, what he was telling him is that this battle you cannot fight it. What it takes for you to enter the promise is not resident inside you. You need to understand that the battle is the Lord. And then you need to hand over the battle to what? To the Lord. So that was the working mindset of Joshua. Anytime he went to battle, he understood that he was not alone. You know, there were two captains that met there. So when Israel is fighting, there are two armies. There's the natural army and then there's the spiritual army. That is your picture I'm painting. Did you hear what I just said? This one. That is your picture. You are not alone. There's never a time that you are alone. You see, some of the things that make us audacious is some of the things that God has helped us to see. There was a time in my life when I was praying because uh, Reverend has said we can share testimony. But you share it in Christ. Because he's the one who who is both to will and what to do of his good pleasure it is it's the one that is working at work in us so i was i was a teenager i think i was like 19 then and there was this unusual hunger to pray every night stay in god's presence and pray wait upon the lord my capacity to pray began to increase i didn't plan to increase prayer time but God, I did one hour, entered two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours. It was when I'll start by 12. I won't stop until around 6 a.m. But I didn't have so much wisdom then uh, because the neighborhood too could not sleep. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? We thought then that uh, the louder you shout, the more you got the <laughs> so, <laughs> Sir, in one of those days, that was my first visitation of an angel. As I was praying and I looked back, I saw a beam. It was just a flash. It gave me a consciousness that I'm not alone. It's ingrained in my, in my mindset. That's why we can dare some things because we know we are not alone. That was why Joshua could not lose any battle. They were coming from Gilgal. We're not talking about Joshua today. They were coming from Gilgal. So, one of, what, what I want us to see here is that Gilgal is the place of open eyes. When you experience Gilgal, you see what is at the back end of things. You understand what is responsible for sponsoring certain things. What is powering certain things, it will become evident in your eyes. You will see it. That's what Gilgal does. And it's very essential for a successful transition to occur. Because Gilgal was a veritable tool at every other junction. At Bethel, he needed open eyes. Praise God. The first mention of Bethel was with uh, Jacob. As he put his head and rested on the, on the stone. I was, something happened. There was a transition. His eyes opened and he saw a ladder, a step. And angels were what? Ascending and descending. So this was one of the things powering the altar of Abraham. Not angel. Angels, plural. So when Abraham is praying, that is the <laughs> the, the structure that is the foundation upon which his prayer is based is an express route, road in the spirit angels are moving up and down you know angels are not like also they are not slow the reason why you can't see them is because of their speed yes if they slow down that's when you see them I'll give you this analogy you understand if you put on a fan if you put it to when it starts rotating you see all the blades right but as you pick up speed, what happens? The blades disappear because yeah, that's speed. That's what speed can do. 
That's the movement of but when they stand and talk to you, they have slowed down. They have slowed down. That's why you can you can see them. Praise the name of the Lord. So, where was I? Better, better. Thank you. Hallelujah. So, we see that sight was needed in better for you to take advantage of better sight must be given and, and basically sight has three um, levels number one is your natural sight which we all have here it will help us navigate our way here number two is understanding understanding too is what is sight that's why paul asks us to pray for the spirit of wisdom and what revelation in the knowledge of him our eyes of understanding being what flooded with light being enlightened so understanding is what also sight and then the third level is your spiritual eyes you have eyes that can see hallelujah you can see into another dimension another realm that also is there so what happened in better that's what happened in better so you need sight to really really participate in what is happening in better let, let me say this briefly about revelation I think uh, Pastor um, Pastor Felix, thank you, sir, mentioned it when we started the meeting. He talked about there are sometimes we see things and we don't understand it. See, if understanding is not there, interaction can never happen. What fast what facilitates interaction is what is understanding. And I pray that you see many of us. We have been, we are, we are, we are, you see, I, I like what uh, Reverend said earlier that the, the, the supernatural might not be spectacular. See, as we are here, the supernatural is already taking place. Let me tell you one of our challenges. You explain it away. You explain it away. How many of you have been feeling something like a dew on your head since we started? It's like a dew, yes. When Reverend said, it, after a while, the, the, the dew was coming was becoming stronger it was on the head sometimes you say ah maybe it's my head that is scratching me or maybe it's the air conditioning it's the air conditioning <laughs> that is making it behave like that because of how how early we have become we explain away supernatural things and sometimes supernatural things can be very very small and you can miss it let me give you an example that of elijah he was telling the man to check right what did he see in the sky like the feast of a man. I think Pastor Lumide is the tallest person here, right? Yeah. Yeah, pull up your feast. How big is this? Now, now take it to the sky. How big is that? You can look at it. What it be this? And that is the communication of heaven. You just miss something major. Praise the name of the Lord. All right, let's run. After Bethel, what was the next stop? Jordan, right? There was Jordan, right? Was it Jericho? Jericho was the second stop. Yeah. You know, of course, we understand that it was sight that made them to conquer Jericho. It was the strategy that came from that interaction that helped them to conquer. You see, can you see the importance of sight also in Jericho? In Jordan too, when the Spirit of God descended, that was the prophetic sign that God gave to John to identify Jesus. Can you see sight also coming into play when it comes to Jordan? But sir, the challenge is this. It was only Elijah and Elisha. They came out of Gilgal. Only the two of them. Every other point, you will see sons of the prophet. At Bethel, there were sons of the prophet. At Jericho, sons of the prophet. At Jordan, sons of the prophet. But none of them went came out from Gilgal. they had information but they didn't have revelation because they did not go to Gilgal. the knife of elijah did not cut them see i'm praying for our generation that will not lose out because Fathers will be transitioning. They will. But if the knife of their blade has not caught you, and you see, that cutting 
is by your by you so it's not that they will will it to cut you you will submit to the process you will submit to the process you know it, we, we are a very proud generation the, the resources is there. Uh, uh, what? Listen, yes, uh, just, just go to um, YouTube. Elijah, the sixth of his power. You will see 50 messages. Yeah, AI, AI. chat GPT. Give me the. It will lift. It will. Lift. Can I say something very, very painful? Do you know something that was said about John here? He said he's supposed to go in the spirit and the power. You know? John never experienced the power of Elijah. You know, many times people preach that John, he didn't heal any sick, but he healed the nation. He didn't live in the fullness of, his, of the grace of God upon his life. The Elijah code is both words and power. Because it's a confrontational kind of ministry. And for you to be safe, there must be something backing you up. You have to be powerful. When they send 50 battalions to come and carry you, you must be able to call fire from heaven. You must be able to say, if I be a servant of God, let the Lord answer by fire. You, you have to be able to say that. John couldn't say that. They just took him and put him to prison. He was now sending messages to Jesus. Truly, are you the son of God? Or should we wait for another? If you have embodied the full code of the Elijah or as the Elijah anointing, you will have both. If, yes, if they are coming, the fire will come out. Then you'll be the one to say, okay, you want, want the king to see me. You don't force me. I go and see the king. So there's a generation that has the word but doesn't have power. Yes. And Paul says, not with enticing words of man, but in the demonstration of the spirit and power. Hallelujah. That is the Elijah code. There must be a demonstration, an attestation of the fact that God is with you, like a mighty, terrible one. It must be with signs following. Jesus said, This gospel, don't just go with what you have seen me do. Go and tarry. Say go and tarry until you are what endued with power Hallelujah. from on high. It is only then that you become a matter, a witness. It's only then that the power of the endless life can flow and, and you know permeate through you. People of God, we need both the spirit and what and the power. That is Elijah code. So he exhibited a Powerful word transition. Hallelujah. Number two. Why Elijah? Number two. Elijah's work with God was so robust that he became a system of spiritual advantage. His work with God was so robust. It became a system of spiritual advantage. There are men that have worked with God that at the end of their life they, don't, they, they might have come into the world as men but when they are exi exiting the earth they have become a system. People to access God need to study about them. You, you know, and, and this is scriptural. You know, sometimes when God is referring to the law, he calls the law Moses. No, Jesus said, he, they have Moses and the prophets. So he's not talking about the person of Moses. He's talking about the system called Moses. So his work with God had become so robust that he became what? A system. That's why we need to study Elijah. And that is one of the things that God began to, be, began to recommend when it came to the end time. He said, ah, the, Jesus, the Lord cannot come except the spirit of Elijah comes. Except, he didn't call it the spirit of Elijah. He said, except Elijah comes. So this man has transited from being an individual to, to a system of spiritual advantage. And he's not just giving us a template. He's also telling us how to live our lives. 
there are men that walked this earth that chapters of scriptures are written to their account there are men that walk this earth that books are written to their account and there are men that walk this earth you will hear in scriptures he was born he married a wife he gave birth to sons and daughters and died that's all that will not be our special in the name of Jesus That's the reason why we need to study Elijah. So that when we leave the earth, covenants already will exist in the earth. You see, covenants are named after Menu. You hear about the Abrahamic covenant. It's a man that has become a system. You have you had Davidic covenant. It's a man that has become what? A system. You have Mosaic covenant. You have men that have become what? System. We should hear about uh, Diamond Lola covenants too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It become a system. There are men in contemporary time. They've died long ago. There are denominations that are saying, Oh Lord, Baba Lolao. How many of you have gone to Orioke before? Okay, I thought we all to me. I have gone to Orioke. <laughs> you hear, Oh Lord, Baba Lolao. He has the man has become a system. And the, the last day church, that's how we must live. Oh. <laughs> wow let me run <laughs> number three this one is very straightforward Elijah is the prophetic code that created a pathway for Jesus to come and it will also be the code that will usher his return Elijah is the prophetic code that created a pathway for Jesus to come and for Jesus to come, yes, and it also be the code that will usher is what is return. John chapter 1, verse 23. John chapter number 1, verse 23. Hallelujah. Maybe if you start from 20, so that we can bring context to it. So they were asking him who he was. So he said, and he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. Right? Verse 21. And they asked him, what then? Are thou Elias? And he said, I am not. Are thou the prophet? And he said, no. Verse 22. They were asking if it was the person, the Elijah the person. He said, I'm not Elijah the person. Because their understanding was that a person was going to come. But he understood that what is coming is a system, is a spirit, not a person. So that's why I said, I'm not Elijah. Then said they unto him, Who art thou that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? Verse 23. Let's read together. One, two, three, go. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet. So he located himself as what? The voice. I was crying in the wilderness and his cry is that the way of the lord be what be prepared see time will not make us understand the sacrifice that john had to put up with to go into the wilderness because john was the son of a priest his father was born in incest when the angel gabriel came and met him so dinner lunch and breakfast is already is i'm talking about wave offering you know <laughs> peace offering trespass they they had a location in all those all those departments their seats and place of prominence in the nation of israel was guaranteed they were the primal figures in those days after the king was the clergy was the priesthood so the elijah code means you have to walk away from certain things some some things that will look like advantage and sir walking away is not as simple as it as we have just said it i'll tell you my story so i was an accountant working in a firm and the lord troubled my heart troubled my heart i said god give me four years after four years i will answer your call because i wanted to prove to my in-laws to be that uh -uh, I, this guy too get, get, get destiny <laughs> you don't understand what i'm saying it's not a riffraff i went to above my own university i finished i have i can uh, uh, i'm not uh, i'm not a pushover so let me walk 
<laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Sir, after some years, they stopped paying me salary. I moved to another organization. The pattern continued. The, the, the company will be going well, though, until I enter the company. <laughs> when I entered the company, <laughs> I was the Jonah in their boat. I was the Jonah in their boat. Pray before you employ someone. <laughs> Don't go and employ someone that destiny is on his head and is hiding. Imagine the losses those men suffered. Can I tell you, those two companies, they, they closed down. I'm telling you the truth. They are owing me. They are still owing me, but I, I don't have the liver to go and ask them. Because I know I'm the cause of their problem. Yes, I'm the one in there. Thank you, my sister. <laughs> the day I resigned, I just sat in the office. I couldn't stand up. Hope you can see me. No, I'm talking about to the camera. I just sat in the office. So. <sighs> to stand up, I couldn't stand up. Because the future looked bleak. I wanted to go and meet my boss. I said, now nah, my village people, that resignation letter is not me. Can you just, can you bring it back? <laughs> it was my younger sister that came from my office to pick me out. I couldn't leave the office so. because the denomination I grew up in if you're a minister of God it's a call to suffering I don't want to mention it because we're online it's a call to suffering so that, 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 that don't damage in my mind that I didn't realize my sister said trauma <laughs> so walking away you need the strength of God to walk away from advantage. I'm talking about like 15 years ago. I was only 120,000 15 years ago. 120,000 naira 15 years. It's not, it's not my mind. Yes. It's good money. <laughs> to walk away from that into nothing. You know, if God is telling you to go and join a, an already established ministry, you already. Yeah, but you gotta pioneer something. <laughs> oh my. My father insulted. If you had known, wouldn't have wasted money on you. We wouldn't have wasted money on you. We'll have sent you to Elisha Bible College. You don't know Elisha Bible College. You don't know. Elisha Bible College. Go and go and go. You can't do that one. Oh my. When they come back, they ask me, when did Nepal take light? <laughs> I said, it's not you people's fault. It's because I'm here in this house. Uh, walking away is, is, is easier said than what than done. But walk away, we must. Because if we don't walk away, we can't embrace Christ. That's what Abraham says. He said, I've lifted up my hand, so what? To El Shaddai. The, the one that is responsible for my uprising and my uplifting is not man, it's God. Hallelujah. So the advantages, he had to walk away from it. Then he had to go and start in the will that he didn't start in the city. He didn't start anything in the temple. He needed to go to the wilderness. But the God of heaven, without social media, Without jingles, without Facebook adverts, he moved the whole civilization of the nation of Israel into the wilderness. You see, the message of John, uh, of, it wasn't a good message. Though. He used to abuse people and they used to come again. It's a brood of vipers. <laughs> and they are still coming. <laughs> because a voice, he had identified who he was, that I am a voice of one crying in the wilderness. What I am doing, you see, our, okay, let me not jump. Let me not jump. Let me let me be a good teacher of the word. Let me go to the next one. I still have 22 minutes. All right. Number four. We're looking at why Elijah. Elijah code is one of the pathways to abundance in the midst of scarcity. Elijah code is one of the pathways of abundance. In the midst of 
scarcity see we need to really understand that template especially in this context and this time praise god hallelujah with what the nation is going through we need to understand this code in the time of elijah it was so bad that mothers sat down and they said okay let's kill this child and eat then tomorrow you know you know my greatest shock is this that they finish one child one day have you thought you didn't you didn't hear what i said chicken you know chicken is small a full-grown they ate they finished the boy and they were hungry the second day <laughs> so when the one the, the the other one said it's not so the king was walking it but the elders were go and read that when get them the elders were with elijah But they left the king, they left the palace. We follow who no road. <laughs> the elders, they left the king. He was walking alone on the wall on the palace. Where are the where is his team? His cabinet. They were in the place where things where food was. Yeah, where things they happen. That is the reason why we need this code, especially in this season. The Lord led me into some kind of fasting at the beginning of the year. And in the midst of it, too, I, I, was, I was struck down with malaria. I continued the fast. <laughs> I continued the fast. I took tablets. Continued the fast. Yes. Glory to God. I just took um, Godimon. One, two. In your own mind, you have broken the fast. Me, the fast continues. <laughs> I know you in your own mind you have broken the fast. I took one, two spoons of milk. the fast what? It continues. See, God is not interested in your suffering. It's not the fact that the thing is peppering you like yeah, yeah, I'm gonna say I'm happy. He's fasting. <laughs> I don't know the kind of God that uh, we in Africa we are serving. When I began to tell them in church, I said. If you are feeling dizzy, take take six soft drinks. Ah, pastor! Pastor! <laughs> Sir, it is last year I just delivered my wife. <laughs> He's fasting. To taste food. Say, pastor, come and me taste. I say, taste the food. <laughs> taste the food. The fast has not ended. He said, no. Ah, but I said, okay. It's back. Yeah. Some people are so bad that even if they smell food, they say the fast has ended. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Oh. I've met a prophet. He said, you are fasting. And you are cooking your house. Yeah. That you, as you smell the food, the fast has ended. <laughs> Some God. is not. God is not interested in your pain. No. That's not what drives his economy. No. That's not what drives. He's a God of love. I know many of you in something to inside like this is religion the name of that thing i'm diagnosing it is what it's called what religion that's it <laughs> so sir it got to a point ah, we're online i'll say it i'll say it it got to a point i entered a dimension because this realm of the spirit there are portals so yeah there are portals and it is if you have entered you have entered if you have not entered, you have not entered. So there are two realms that I entered. The first one is I entered a place for Naira was everywhere. So I went, ah, so there's a place in the realm of the street where there is Naira. It's a representation. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's Naira. It means that there's a representation of local currency. The place. Sir, let me just let me just summarize by saying Naira has been coming. God has been coming. 
it they come and we are expecting more hallelujah Amen. this has been our best year financially as individual and as a church it's been our best year the things that we could not do before as a church we are doing it now in this season that's what i want to tell you that this is your greatest opportunity i'm telling you i'm telling you because the people that have the covenant to replenish are the people that carry the life of god it's in the mandate says, be fruitful multiply subdue what does replenish mean restock that means stock you have gone out of stock do you understand what i'm saying so when there is lack is the time for children of god to what to restock to restock that's it that's why he said you will laugh at farming it's it's too respect it's, it's that you are laughing out of insanity <laughs> or you are laughing because you know something because you know something hallelujah say i know something i know something hallelujah so that realm opened then the other realm the realm of dollars i entered that place too because i told god i told them in church uh now is the time to to initiate the goshen protocol the sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by what i'm telling you and i'm not joking this is your greatest opportunity yet that's the truth it is nigerians that uh, uh that we are we, we are not nigerians we are, not. we are posted to nigeria you know you know the name of our church is ambassadors international Christian. we are ambassadors <laughs> we are posted we are posted here we are not nigerians so. we are not <laughs> nigeria is our place of primary uh, assignment uh, nigeria. That we don't speak we don't speak like nigerians we don't behave like nigerians we are from another kingdom we are from another kingdom yes our citizenship is what so in this time where people are saying the scarcity this is the greatest opportunity for the church right now listen to me let me be very practical more international organizations will leave nigeria it is time for the indigenous ones to rise it is the law of displacement that is happening if Pfizer goes, you do your Isa, Isa. Pfizer go, Isa is here. Praise the name of the Lord. Help does not come from abroad, it comes from, from the kingdom of God. There is no civilization that has entered into prominence by receiving help from others. They need to dig the ground themselves. So, these are our greatest opportunities. What? Yet. My wife, they are pursuing her here and there. Come and walk here. Come on. I'm, 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 <laughs> There's no other week that another company has not come to meet her. Wow. Where people are being sacked. Yeah. It's a realm. It's a realm. Yeah. And it is not open to a select few. It's oh. open to all of God's children. Oh. All of God's children. Yeah. When they entered Goshen, it was not just Joseph and his family. It was every Israeli that entered into Egypt that activated Goshen. Yes, sir. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, this one, I'm just going to say it. I'm not going to talk about it. The Elijah Code is a spiritual portal that captures understanding of coded messages in nature it captures understanding of coded messages in nature let me just give you one line that means elijah has an anointing that can manipulate nature many of his miracles are nature miracles they are what now the secret of his power proper the greatness of men are hidden in their stories for the purpose of this study we will examine a few of these but because of time we might just take one number one secret of his power is his ordination everyone has touched about on, on it when we started is what 
his ordination what God called him to do before the foundation of the earth this is the script concerning an individual written by God without any form of consultation it is the will of God for us it describes God's blueprint for our lives certain disclosures are revealed when we discover our ordination these disclosures are number one your consecration go and check that text that we read Luke chapter 1 verse 17 you will see that listed in that text of scripture was the consecration there is no office there is no calling when I say calling I'm not talking about ministry I'm talking about every because all of us are called at least number one you are called out of darkness into the marvelous it's a calling yes sir so there are certain consecrations that power your life and you must understand that those consecrations you must understand it's not something that someone will tell you is it we as you are working with god you begin to discover by observation by inquiry by by asking questions the consecrations that power your life will be released to you there's a lady in our church, the lady that went to taiwan yeah that you gave the prophetic word to yeah she she said she doesn't like to argue that if she argues it clogs up her spirit that's like me i like argument <laughs> oh my especially when we are debating scriptures i'm not talking about frivolous like when we are debating scriptures oh my 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 juices will flow oh my god we can be there for hours understand your own cause for her i said that's for you me ah that's well, I'm, I'm on my I'm, I'm, I'm in my habitat one of our meetings our wednesday meetings is debate i don't come and teach it's a round table we open scripture you talk your own i talk my own it was a pattern that god gave me yes at that point people can say pastor i don't agree you know nobody's on top of there we could all come here i say let's look at the word if your ego if your ego is you, know, you carry your ego by the side what we are after is truth praise the name of the lord you must understand your consecration don't copy other people don't copy observe observe god's dealing with you how god works with you what what are his devices he told john he said you should not take any strong drink that was he said you should not take any wine you should not take any strong drink but Nehemiah was shocking wine I'm, I'm not lying, man. Was the man was was him of Cobiera? He did taste that. So if they give him his brandy that is going to pass across, <laughs> Neymar, <laughs> before he gives to the king, he must he must drink part of it. Yeah. And he didn't stop anything. He built the walls of Jerusalem. Oh, he built it. Yes. It is foolishness for uh, John to not look at Neymar. You are a sinner. You have, in fact, you have broken. You, an angel appeared to my father and told me this, and you are drinking this thing. You have lost the faith. In your consecration, Reverend Asura, the consecration of prophetic office is what prayer. prayer oh, you will pray. Understand what your consecration what is. Another thing in our ordination must understand the territories are located to you now a sub in that territory you must understand the demography are located to you in that territory number three your message style your message style if you listen to me there's a lot of humor when i teach that's okay. I didn't, I didn't know that. <laughs> There's a lot of humor when I teach. It's, it's, it's the spirit of joy. It's the spirit of joy. Even when I'm telling you you are going to hell, you will laugh. <laughs> you will laugh and enter heaven. I'm telling you. It, 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 so, so people, some people come and say, Ah, they're not serious. You're laughing. I'm seeking the word of God. And it's the spirit of joy. And in that atmosphere, miracles happen. 
effortlessly. Praise the name of the Lord. And if you look at me physically, you won't think that that I'll pray that. But it is the it is the walking, it's not my natural disposition, it's the walking of my natural disposition. I like to be quiet. I like my own. I like my, my company. I like being by myself. I like myself. <laughs> Praise God. Let's run. Um, the anointing of God upon your life. And the, your partners and associates. I'll say this and then we'll close because I have just two minutes. You see, the way John was, you know, his nutrition and Elijah's nutrition, they were the same. Their clothing was the same. Their style of ministry was the same. It's not copied. It's an anointing. It's not what? It's an anointing. And, 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 and these are the things that are surrounding consecration. These are the things around what? If you are a teacher of God's word, you will give yourself a lot of meditation. You can just be walking and think. My best place where revelations, most, my most iconic revelations is in the toilet. If I'm in the toilet, if I enter today, they tell me, uh, let's say uh, I can be there for two hours. Nobody, no, just stay there on the word. God doesn't mind the smell. Hallelujah. He doesn't know it. Just stay there. Ability to, you know, chew the word. Let the juices flow out. Let the life that is resident on the inside of the word of God, let it come forth. So understand what your consecration is. Can't be upstanding. Can we just give God glory? Can we just honor him this afternoon? Can we just honor him? Let's thank him for the Elijah code. Let's bless him. Let's bless him. Let's bless him. Let's bless him. Oh, thank you. One of the things that the Lord told me is that it will be collapsing time. It will be collapsing time. What you were not able to accomplish in 10 years, this year you will accomplish it in the name of Jesus. He said he will be anointing people's feet for speed, for speed, for speed, for speed. He will be anointing people's hands to grasp spiritual realities. Can we celebrate God and give him praise? Can we hallow his name? Can we worship him? Thank you, Lord Jesus.